Awesome. All right. Hello, and how's it going? Joe here taking off right off the rip here for this Michael Zoom class. Thank you guys for tuning in. As you're tuning in, as we're doing this, please let me know where you're watching from. Say hi. And that is going to happen in the chat bar. So make sure when you click on the chat bar, you can type in there. You can ask questions there. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. Make sure that you have a check to everyone. Uh, we want to make sure that we're getting any kind of interaction, any kind of questions answered as we go along. All right. So I have the final class from here or from Caesar here in the Zoom class for 2020. For those that don't know me, I am Joe. I work with Caesar North America. My first lesson every time I do these classes is how to properly pronounce Caesar. So S I S E R is pronounced Caesar. Yay! I say it every time. Congratulations to everyone. Okay, they're chiming in. Hello, everyone. We have people in Dallas, New York, Georgia. Arizona, Missouri, North Carolina, Ohio. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Uh, we are already in the middle of December, essentially. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're all staying safe. We are in my basement right now, uh, which is where if you've been in any of my Zoom classes so far in 2020 or any of them in 2020, they've all taken place here in my basement. I actually decorated it here with this awesome little uh, artificial tree that I got from my friends at Michael's. Uh, it's great. It's my tree. I've named it Karen because I feel like Karen's have taken way too many meme abuses this year. So I feel like they need some love, uh, which actually works for today because we are going to do some decorating along the way. Um, and that is going to be decorating these awesome blank bulb ornaments that I got from Michaels. And I'm gonna be using some Caesar Easy PSV Etch. So if you caught my last class, it's the Etch Glass uh, Effect using a D kennel that we have. Um, and then the first lesson that I'm gonna do is actually gonna be decorating a pillowcase with Caesar Sparkle Heat Transfer Vinyl. It's very difficult to pick up on these cameras. I completely understand, but I hope you can kind of see that sparkle on it from here. Uh, we obviously have a bunch of great content with our social medias and our, our YouTube videos. So if you ever want to see what sparkle, Caesar Sparkle is in action, you can go over to our YouTube channel at any time. Just look up Caesar North America. I got a ton of videos there. Um, so I'm going to be using two heat transfer models for that today. So I have the gold and I'm using our white sparkle. So this is a brand new addition to, to the Michaels line. Um, so out of all the Caesar heat transfer vinyls, sparkle is one of the new additions that they just brought on with four awesome colors. So you have the gold, the white that I'm using today, and then you have a silver and a red. So all great colors, especially for the holidays coming up. So hopefully you can get some inspiration along the way. And if you have any questions, uh, Lindsay is going to be monitor, monitoring those, so hopefully she can chat, you know, cut me off, ask me some, or I can answer those questions along the way, because otherwise we're going to cruise along uh, and get started. So I've already cut my Caesar Sparkle, so I'm using two colors on my pillowcase here. And uh, before I get there too, just in case you ever need some inspiration, another thing to look into in case you're not very art savvy and you just kind of want to get an idea and start playing around with stuff. Uh, this is another offering that we just started having at Michael's not that long ago. And these are the clip art book packs. So these are actually three different USB full of SVG files that you can manipulate, cut with, print, whatever you're using. So for example, one that I've used a lot in the last couple projects is the holiday pack. And then when you open it up, it's got all various holiday SVGs. These are all ready to go. You can use them for any kind of holiday. You can manipulate them, do what you want with them. And it's a great start in case you're not comfortable with designing. Because obviously that's step one is coming up with a cool idea. So I did use the 
one of these files or two of these files actually for the next project I'm going to do with the ornaments. But the first thing I'm going to do is do the decoration on the pillowcase. So what I'm using today, in case any of you have not seen this yet at Michael's, is actually going to be applying with the Caesar Craft heat press. So this is what I'm using today. I'm going to cut my head off for a little bit in this shot. <laughs> so the Craft heat press is the new heat press by Caesar. It's available at Michael's. It's awesome when you know that you're using heat transfer vinyl a lot. This is going to give you the most efficient way and accurate way of applying your heat transfer vinyl. Um, it does, it's got the upper platen, the lower platen. It's got a pressure adjustment knob, which is very important when it comes to applying heat transfer vinyl. You can dial in your temperature, your time right here on the display, and then your press is good to go. Um, so also having this surface is really great when you are working with weeding heat transfer vinyl too. I don't know how many people really enjoy weeding heat transfer vinyl. Some do. I don't mind it, but sometimes I like to get it done quicker than normal. So Sparkle, what's great about this product is it already has a sticky carrier. So a big benefit of using the heat press to weed away your excess material is speeding up that process. So right now I have my heat press set to 305 degrees. So this is the hot element. So you do not want to touch that. So when you feel under here, it's warm, but this lower platen will retain the warmth from that upper platen when you close it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna close it for a few seconds. And what that's doing is warming up that lower platen. And now I can take my cut piece and just lay it onto the warmed area and lift from there. When I do that, the excess material falls off a lot nicer, a lot faster. So this way I can save some time. And yes, be careful, do not touch that up there. Once you have that good, see how much faster that was weeding that? So if you're ever working with Caesar Easy Weed Family, if you're working with the Sparkle, this is a trick that you can do with your heat press. Does anyone have questions on that? No, but, have, uh, oh, no, but oh, Donna oh. has got the heat press and says she loves it. Okay. How many people have the craft heat press already? Or how many people are, are uh, putting it on their wish list? So Michaels is actually running a pretty good deal from what I just told on the, on the heat press. I'll let them answer that one. <laughs> There's a question, uh, how big is it? Oh, great question. So the, the pressing area is, so from here, it's nine inches by 12 inches. So you have nine by 12 pressing area. So that is, that is enough to knock out a full front if you wanted to. If you start going larger, you might have to do multiple presses. Like for example, what we're gonna do today, is actually going to take a couple different presses. So it's a great question, though. Uh, does Caesar make a 16 by 20 or 16 by 24? Uh, we have, yes, we have a 16 by 20, but they're not carried at Michael's. All right, so I'm weeding away, as you can see, the excess of the other sparkle color, so I'm using white here. You only want to be careful when you do that trick that if your, your cut design is overly detailed, you just want to be a little cautious when it comes to weeding on the heat. Because sometimes if your cut isn't good, then you might notice that there's some lifting. But the big benefit with uh, with products like our Sparkle here that have the sticky carrier is if anything lifts up, you can simply place it back down. Um, Chris has a question if the file can be downloaded online or is it only on the file drive? Uh, 
I'm not entirely sure how I, Michael's has the uh, the hard USBs that you can plug into, but I don't know if it's available online. It could be. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. All right, I think I weeded everything. I have this good to go. Two colors good to go. Again, another awesome thing about the sparkle is unlike normal glitter, again, this is a smooth glitter. The glitter flakes are actually embedded into the surface. So it has a smooth layer on the top. So if you're used to the other glitter that we have that has kind of that sandpaper feel, more of that bling, but with that glitter, the regular glitter heat transfer vinyl, it's not recommended to be layered on top of one another. So glitter, regular glitter heat transfer vinyl can't be layered on top of. But with the sparkle, even though it's still glitter, in that because of that smooth surface that it has, you are allowed to layer on top of one another. So if you wanted to layer other sparkle colors on top of sparkle, you can do that directly on top of one another. Or if you were mixing and matching with other Easy Weeds or other products of Caesar, you can mix and match and layer on top of the sparkle as well. So it's a very versatile product. All right, so I picked these pillowcases up. I actually didn't have a pillow. I thought it had a pillow that came with it. So it's just really decorating a pillowcase. And then I figured I was gonna use it to kind of coat it around my Christmas tree. Since who doesn't love buffalo plaid? Okay, number one thing you wanna look out for before you start pressing on a heat press and using heat transfer vinyl is look over the, uh, the textile that you're gonna be pressing with. So even if it's a garment, even if it's a pillowcase, you want to pay attention to certain things about that that could potentially cause uneven pressure or some problem when it comes to adherence of the heat transfer vinyl. So in this case, it's, it's kind of deceiving because it's a pillowcase, so it looks really flat. But on the other side is the zipper in almost like a, maybe a fourth way down from the top here. The zipper is right in that spot. Obviously the zipper's here, you can feel the zipper itself. This, if I pressed it, could potentially cause uneven pressure. So you kind of want to be careful. You kind of want to pay attention to those areas you're pressing on. Even if you don't have a heat press, at least with the heat press, I can get the confidence that I know the pressure will push down enough. But if you're using a home iron or if you're using an easy press and you do a project like this, you still, need to be careful and very attentive to how much pressure you're using. That you may have experienced in the past where you press something, you've washed it and it's fallen off or you've seen peeling. 99% of the time is because the pressure is not enough. So be cautious with that when you're pressing anything, even garments, when it comes to the, the uh, neck of the garment, the seams, if you're using zipped up like hoodies, anything with a pocket, those kind of things are very, uh, they're variables to cause uneven pressure. Okay, any questions? All right, so we're gonna get cruising on this application. So I'm gonna try to get this as even as possible. Again, I can feel that too. I can feel that there is that zipper there um, I'm going to go with the confidence of pressing it on there. You just have to be cautious about it. Another thing to be cautious about is paying attention to if you do something like this, is the zipper uh, metal or plastic? Because if that zipper is plastic, the zipper, the teeth of the zipper are actually going to melt. So be cautious about that too if you do a project like this. In this case, the zipper teeth are metal, so I don't have to worry about it actually melting under the heat press. So the first thing we're gonna do is test the pressure. I can tell when I push down like that, I need pressure. I see the question of the pressing pillow inside. Absolutely, I gotta give a round of applause for that. You can 100% use a pressing pillow. If you have one lying around, I always show the pressing pillow. Um, right now, Michaels doesn't 
currently have them, but if you use the Cricut one or the Silhouette one, they might be able to fit into a project like this, but we have other heat press pillows that are different dimensions and they might work better for a project like this. So absolutely, I like that someone recommended the pressing pillow. So first thing we're gonna do is test that pressure. Again, on the heat press, the pressure knob is here. So turning it clockwise is going to increase my pressure. It's lowering, lowering my upper platen, or you can decrease your pressure by turning it counterclockwise. You still need to use your judgment on making sure the pressure is good. I can tell that it's good because I have to use two hands. It's got solid connection. I have a flat, even pressure. I'm not worried about anything uneven. So I should be good to go on my press. I'm also working on an angle. So hopefully I can get this as centered as I possibly can. So this is going to probably take a couple different presses just to show you. Um, because of the dimension, obviously I'm working with a very large press or a pillowcase. So I'm gonna have to press this probably three or four times with everything that's going on it. So just the, the uh, white sparkle alone is going to take two presses. But what's great about the sparkle is you can tack it down if you wanted to. I'm using parchment paper as my cover sheet because you still wanna protect your upper platen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack it down for a second or two, and then I'm going to shift the bottom half and do the same thing. Should be able to peel. So there you go. You just saw one second for each, each part of that. Another benefit of using the heat press, fast application. I see the question of, do you flip your design before you send it to the cutter? Absolutely with heat transfer vinyl. So when you're dealing with regular heat transfer vinyl, you're going to mirror your image because when you go to weed out your excess, it, it doesn't show up right. So this is the front of it. But what you're weeding on is this way, which reads correctly on the screen. So it's opposite here. <laughs> but you're actually cutting and weeding on the adhesive side. So when you go to lay it down onto your textile, that's when you're gonna see it correctly. So obviously if I didn't mirror this, my text would have come out like this and we didn't want that. So I did, I mirrored it. Okay. So now I have to apply two different colors or two different layers for the glitter, gold glitter, gold sparkle, I should say. What I'm going to do, line that up here. Follow the same steps. Pack that down for a second. And peel it. Now I tacked that down for a second. I am going to go back and press again. But the reason why I did the one second, and for those that may have had experience ever layering anything, has anyone ever layered something while the cover sheet was over the other thing? You know, I should say, press it here, but the cover sheet was over your other piece of heat transfer bottle. When you pressed it and peeled it, you saw that annoying line, that crease. So that's because this carrier sheet had time to leave that impression on your other piece of vinyl. So if you ever wanted to avoid that, do what I just did there with the one second tack, peel the carrier off. That way it didn't leave that crease, but I know I have to go back, cover it up and press for the full duration. So with sparkle, you're gonna be set at 305 degrees and you're gonna press for 10 to 15 seconds. That's all it takes for application. As long as you have good pressure with either your, your easy press or your home iron, you should be good to go with that process. Or if you're using the heat press, as you heard it, I could set my time and it would let me know when I was done. Okay, I have to shift this down. And remember, I only tack this portion of this design for one second. So I still have to fully applicate. I have to go through the full application process for this, but I'm gonna also knock out the other part.
So going back to the design, do you have any advice for weeding small designs? Uh, for weeding small designs? Yes. Uh, uh, Marvin says, I can weed large designs, but I have trouble with small designs. What, what trouble are you having with the small designs? Because I think what's what's being asked here is um, with small designs, what can happen is actually when it is on the setup side for your vinyl cutter. If your vinyl cutter is not set up correctly, then cutting small can be a problem. Um, but outside of that, if your vinyl cutter is set up correctly, then you should be able to cut any of our heat transfer vinyl or decal vinyl fine. You just want to make sure that your blade on your uh, vinyl cutter is in good condition. It isn't worn out or abused. And then you also want to maybe adjust the pressure as well as the uh, speed. Because sometimes when you're dealing with smaller, more detailed logos or designs, Slowing the speed down allows the blade to actually have time to cut it thoroughly. Also, another recommendation is setting it up so that it does an overlap cut. Because sometimes, say it starts at this point and cuts all the way around the letter, but it stops not all the way at the very end, that can be a problem because when you go to weed it, things can start lifting up. So sometimes giving yourself an overcut will let you thoroughly cut your design out. I hope that helps. There we go. Finished up. I know it looks backwards on the camera. I hope it doesn't. Uh, but yeah, this is it. Dear Santa, I tried. So this is a perfect example of what you can do with the Caesar Sparkle. As, I, as I'm trying to explain it, I know, again, like down in my ill-lit basement, it doesn't really show the flesh as much. I'm trying to get the bounce off of some of the lighting here. But it is a very smooth, soft, sparkly product. Again, the glitter flakes are embedded inside of the heat transfer vinyl itself. Again, a very versatile product where you can layer on top of one another. Um, this was just something to showcase the product. Again. The buffalo plaid pattern is obviously super popular, but around this time of the year, it definitely is probably the most popular. So just a great project idea, something quick, as you saw, fast application, but it's another thing to show you, yes, because of the dimension of this heat press, I had to press it a few different times, as you saw. And the very important part about that and the importance of making sure that that's all set up accurately and it's done, is because uh, that's because we want it to hold up in the wash. Now, if you know it's going on something that isn't going to be laundered, then you have a little bit more wiggle room on the application end of it. So if it's something, again, like this, that might cause dye migration because this is a sublimated fabric and it can cause dye migration, it can cause things to start looking pink, so something white that could eventually start looking pink. I know, you, I know you probably experienced some of that. That's actually caused by dye migration. So sometimes lowering the temperature is going to alleviate that. So that's another thing to remember, to pay attention to what kind of fabrics you're working with, uh, the types of material, the colors of the material, because red and black is obviously some of the most rich colors out there. So when heat application hits it, it could cause that dye that's naturally in the fabric to start migrating. So it turns into a gas under that heat. So we want to kind of escape through that vinyl, which will inevitably cause it to dye it, like so, or cause it to start changing its own color. So especially with white, it'll start turning pink. Or if you're in like a navy blue, it'll start looking like a lighter blue or something like that. So if you ever experience anything like that, just remember it is something to do with the migration of the color of the fabric. And lowering the temperature on your heat press can sometimes alleviate that. Does anyone have questions? No, this is 
saying that that looks great. And they're also wondering if you made your shirt. The one I'm wearing? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a huge Die Hard fan. I argue it all the time. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I will continue to argue that. Um, but yeah, I actually made a video on this at Caesar. This is all Caesar heat transfer vinyl. I even got it on the back with some of my easy patterns. Uh, decorated the sleeves. I figured I was gonna make my own ugly sweater. And uh, so I did this and it's a Die Hard, <laughs> it's a uh, Christmas movie. But this is all heat transfer vinyl. That's another beautiful thing that you're able to do. Um, even what I have underneath the tree right here, I know it might be hard to see, but I actually decorated a bandana uh, that I got from Michael's too. And I used some of our Easy Weed electric colors and decorated that and tied it around the bottom of the tree here. So very, very versatile. Great question. All right, so we're gonna cruise on to the next project. So that was heat transfer vinyl. Now we're gonna move on to decal vinyl. So I talked about this in the last Michaels class that I did, and these were the projects that I did. I made these, I decorated these fun little uh, Tupperware containers, very tiny. I hope you can see it, but that is actually a decal vinyl. So it gives the impression of etched glass without having to deal with etching creams or, you know, uh, the other ways they do it, like sanding or doing anything like that. So it's literally a decal vinyl that Michaels now carries. So this is what it looks like. I know, not very exciting. It is on a paper backing, so it does kind of add that opacity to it here when it's in the raw material. But this is a decal vinyl that you just put on your vinyl cutter, cut out your design, weed away, mask it, which this is an example of the Caesar uh, application mask for the Easy PSV. It is a gridded application tape. It's a medium tack. Um, so this is this is called Easy PSV Etch. That's it. So Etch is what I'm going to be using today. But we have all sorts of variations of Easy PSV. So what PSV stands for is just simply pressure sensitive vinyl. So if you ever hear anything from Caesar and you see the words or the acronyms PSV or HTV, PSV is pressure sensitive vinyl, which is what I'm going to show right now. HTV is heat transfer vinyl, which is what I just showed you on the heat press. So if you ever see those acronyms tossed around, that's what those stand for. Um, now, our etched easy PSV, that's where, you, where you'll just kind of have to understand the differences within that line is etch is a permanent adhesive. So if you were gonna put it on something uh, with glass or get that etched effect, just remember that it is a permanent adhesive. So it will stick around for a really long time. Uh, so make sure you commit to that. Um, and then we have removable options though, but we don't have etch in the removable option. Uh, so again, Michaels has an awesome large array of different Caesar Easy PSV products. The other one I showed, I'm not going to show in this class, but the other cool one that they just brought on that I added to the top of the Tupperware is our chalkboard Easy PSV. So that's right. You can actually draw on these surfaces, this decal vinyl that we have with chalk markers, chalk crayons, regular chalk. It's a removable Easy PSV. So there's a lot of fun projects you can do, especially you got kids, you can put it up on the walls, they can draw on the walls without getting in much trouble. And you don't have to worry about uh, your anything ripping off as bad as it would be with permanent because it is a removable adhesive. So very versatile. So the one I'm gonna use today, again, since I'm gonna be decorating these fun little uh, ornament bulbs. So when they come, they're just, they're kind of narrow. Um, but they're obviously, they have the bulb effect. Uh, so the class I had last week or the last time was applying this. And obviously with these containers, I still have that curved effect. So a trick that I was showing, and I'm going to show it in this one, 
is show or is explaining how to do relief cuts. So relief cuts are what are going to make it a lot nicer when it comes to applying around curved edges. In case you've ever had any issues with that. So I'm going to do two of these. And both these designs, I already have cut and weeded and masked. But the two designs I'm using today, this fun little Christmas tree design and these candy cane designs are actually in that um, art book pack that I showed you. So it is one of those clip arts that one of the many so you're able to use uh, on any kind of heat transfer vinyl or easy PSV. You're not limited to. Or if you ever do any kind of printing, that's another thing to remember. So if you print on paper products or if you do those kind of prints on just your regular inkjet um, printer, you can still use the multicolor images and do that. Uh, especially with the easy PS or easy sub lead line, not confusing you with that. But another thing that Michael's just brought on, we'll be doing some more classes in 2021. So we'll get there. So anyways, that's what I did with these. I set it up for the etch easy PSV. They're cut out, they're masked. Now remember, when you're cutting easy PSV, unlike the HTV, that question that said, do I mirror it? For the heat transfer vinyl, I mirrored it, but for the easy PSV, you don't mirror it because you're going to look at it the way you're essentially going to read it because that's how you're applying it. So you're going to cut it out. You're going to use the mask that I showed you. This is the paper backing to the etch, garbage after you pull it off. But that's just to show you with using the grid lines to get it all perfectly centered. That's a big help with the application mask is to, if you ever have anything big and you want to make sure you get it angled right, these are square inched application tapes, so it helps out quite a bit. Now, the etch on plastic. Absolutely, that's what I'm going to do right here. Okay. Is uh, both projects I did are actually on plastic. So these bulbs are plastic and then those containers I did are actually plastic too. So they do come out really well. Again, yeah, this is, that's just plastic. These are plastic. If you actually have glass, absolutely, it, it looks like that. But anything clear, it definitely works. But again, it's permanent. Um, another quick thing just, just to put out there uh, on the maintenance with it. So after you apply it on something, so say you apply it onto a wine glass or you apply it onto uh, just a regular glass cup, it's try to avoid putting it into the dishwasher because any decal vinyl is technically not dishwasher safe. It may work for you, but we have to just kind of say it's not. So be cautious on that. Try to hand wash anything. Um, and also don't put anything inside the microwave. That's another thing. Try to avoid doing that. So, okay. Now, what I mean by relief cuts is this is one giant square. Now, if you lay it down onto an odd shaped thing, you can already imagine once it starts bending around something, it's going to eventually start buckling up or waving in certain areas. So that can be a problem when it comes to actually applying around a curved surface. So relief cuts are a huge help uh, just kind of being able to break up that application tape when you need to. So what I do with these is I kind of cut on the, on the application tape. I'm not cutting the actual transfer itself. I'm cutting up to where the transfer starts essentially. I hope you can see it. But I'm going to go around each side and I'm just going to simply cut relief cuts around this design. Try to avoid cutting any of the actual transfer. Okay. So I just gave four cuts. So now you can see like I'm going to be able to move parts at one time. And again, this is permanent. So once you kind of lay it down, it's pretty difficult to lift it back up and reposition it. So you do want to make sure that you have it down as well as you can. 
I, and me personally, I'm not overly confident with myself with a lot of this stuff. I have shaky hands and, you know, I, I try to practice this stuff every once in a while. Uh, I'm more the educator on that and executing it sometimes doesn't always work, but this is definitely the trick that I always recommend and it has worked for me. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to start with the center of the image, center of my transfer. I'm going to try to do that on an angle here. So I'm going to press down in the middle, but I'm keeping my fingers from the adhesive bonding down right away. But what I'm going to do one side at a time is kind of roll that relief cut to the best of my ability to smoothing it out per piece. So I just did that top quarter. Now I'm going to move down to the second quarter and just go around my design. Okay, so I'm a lot more confident on that. You can even see where the application tape overlapped on itself. Now, if that didn't have a relief cut, then it probably would have really rippled my transfer, which would have ultimately caused it to look kind of funny. So once you have that, then you still want to kind of, you still want to take a squeegee. So any kind of squeegee you have, and you still kind of want to create that bond. So I'm just going to apply a little more pressure, make sure all my edges are down. Whoops. Okay. And then once you have that, then I'm going to peel against itself. You just want to peel the application tape against itself and kind of roll it down. If you see any kind of bubbling or anything like that, you can obviously go back and fix that. But as you can see, smooth sailing around that curve. There we go. Money in the bank. What do you guys think? Look at that etched effect. Smooth. It would have been impossible to do as one whole thing. I'm going to do another one, but See how that turned out, that cool etched effect. Now, the one thing, the only other like negative, the one negative I would say from doing the uh, relief cut is unfortunately you really can't reuse the application tape. So it is kind of a one-time use when you do something like that. Otherwise, if you did it like a normal application, you can reuse the application tape. We don't recommend reusing the application tape more than like once, because as soon as you even touch it, it actually starts contaminating it. So it makes it less sticky. So it could be difficult. Um, so that is the one thing. So it's a one-time use when you do the relief cut, because you're not going to be able to use it again. So. Can you use the clean the ornament with anything first? I'm sorry? Do you need to clean the ornament with anything first? Uh, you can just use regular soap and water. Dry it down that way if you want to. I didn't. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem with that. But any kind of surfaces, you can use like just regular alcohol and, and just kind of wipe it down that way if it needs it. Just be careful on which surfaces you can put those kind of cleaning solutions on. Just any kind of basic cleaning uh, should be sufficient enough. But something fresh out of the box, you should be fine. If you were going and decorating your office, say you were doing your office window and you wanted to decorate the outside and give it the etched glass, of course, yes, you're going to want to clean that off. Just use regular soap and water uh, and it should be completely fine. Just wait till it dries, wait till it's cleaned up and, and perfect again, and then do the application. Great question. You're welcome on the relief cut tip. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad to help. That's what I'm going to try and show. All right, I got one more. So I'm going to do this Christmas tree. Again, another awkward position for it. So for this one, we're going to do same as before. I like to kind of cut the application tape kind of close to the design. I don't like to have any kind of excess on there if I don't need it. And obviously with this design, it's really awkward, but I'm going to just try to cut in between where there's openings to kind of give it so that I can kind of roll the uh, little 
uh, sharper edges of the design around the curved uh, surface. So this one I might add like maybe three relief cuts on each side. And again, if it seems time consuming, I understand, but I'm telling you this, this is a lifesaver when you do these kind of projects around any surfaces. Like again, even if your job, your business was creating custom cups or mugs or, um, you know, wine glasses, like I said, especially around this time, because these are all, it's all about custom projects for the holidays. Okay, so I did about three cuts on each side and then one on the top and one on the bottom. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. So the way I'm holding it, I want to make sure that I put the center down first. Try to angle that the best you can in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna keep as much of it up as I can and just kind of start from one side and roll each edge away. If you cut a design that you don't use right away, should you store it with the application tape or without the application? Um, I think either way would really essentially work as long as you keep it stored in a cool climate, uh, climate controlled and nothing on top of it. So be careful, obviously, again, it's pressure sensitive vinyl. So if you do a bunch of these, you have them cut and then you stack on top of one another, I know it might seem like it can't be that heavy, but over time, the force could cause the adhesive to bond back to the paper backing. So when you go to peel it, it could uh, lift up that paper backing. You just want to be careful on that. Other than that, uh, it's not it's not a bad or either way works really. Okay, so. I'm just going to squeegee out my edges, smooth it out a little bit. And just like before, we're just going to start at the top and roll the application tape against itself. There we go. Another one. Hope you can see it. Cool little Christmas tree. Fun little etch project. So we have two of these done. Again, I had to make it more difficult than it had to be, but uh, normally they're done really fast. Uh, you can knock out a ton of these. And I figured it would be fun to add one little extra piece of it. Um, oh, we have some questions. Does the vinyl feel rough, like real etching, or no? Uh, it feels like it would essentially feel like it was more graved on. It has a little bit of a lift on it, but it's a super thin product, so you really couldn't tell um, from from afar. If you started feeling on it, it would essentially feel like it was still etched, uh, just a little bit different. And obviously another thing that we always recommend to people too is, is well, obviously it would be hard on a project like this, but on like an actual window, you can always do a reverse cut and press it on the inside of the window. So that way, like, or the inside of glass surface, whatever you're doing, and that way from the outside, you wouldn't feel it at all. You would just see from the inside, the opposite. I hope that makes sense. Kind of a reversed look. But yeah, there's a there's a little bit of a feel to it. Nothing terrible. Just like even if you were to regularly etch it, you would still feel it. Uh, but again, without having to deal with any any etching creams or any kind of extensive etching process, you could just set this up right on your vinyl cutter like normal and cut it out like any cut, kind of decal vinyl and uh, apply. So for the last little piece, I figured uh, I would make a mess all over my basement with some 
various glitters. Now these are, I'm sure you probably have some glitters laying around. If not, I'm sure Michaels has a ton of different types of glitters. And uh, I know there's a million ways of doing this. Again, I'm not a to total crafter. I'm an educator about the product. So I try things myself and experiment with them. So there's probably a smoother way to do this because I always make a mess. But basically, I just kind of dump some glitter in there and shake it around. And it comes out pretty cool. Uh, you can try the epoxy thing. I'm not familiar with it entirely. I've never really done it myself, but I'm just gonna pour a little bit of glitter inside there. And uh, last time all I did was kind of just shake it up. You definitely wanna make sure you cap that with your hand. And it kind of just goes all over the place. And then you can put the top back on. I'm gonna do this with the other one. Oh boy. So shake that up. Okay. So just a little bit of an extra effect. Fill it up with some glitter. It gives a little bit of opacity, so it really does make the etch pop a little bit more. Obviously glitter is fun. <laughs> glitter is good for your soul. It is, and then you find it just everywhere. But uh, yeah, this was what I had for you today. These two ornament projects I'm gonna set up on my Christmas tree here. And then of course the pillowcase, which I don't have a pillow to go with, but I will probably have it lied down underneath the Christmas, the, the mini Christmas tree that I have, which I think will work. Because dear Santa, I sure did try in 2020. Uh, I know you all tried. We all did our best in 2020. Um, I just wanted to start by thanking every single one of you guys that have tuned into a lot of my classes this year. It was a new thing. I want to thank Michael so, so much for having me on for so many classes I've done this, this year with them since this quarantine has all started. And I love the opportunity to get to hang out with you guys. I hope you learned something new. Again, I'm not as overwhelming or as impressive as a lot of these other awesome people that are creating awesome arts and crafts. I'm more the educator about the Caesar products. So that's really what I predominantly wish and hope that I get the questions answered for you on that end. Uh, you can always ask us at any time at Caesar. We're here to help always. Again, Michaels is a huge partner of ours that carries all the products. So if you wanna see more videos, if you wanna see more things we're doing, try to check out our social media links. We're all over Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And all we talk about are just more fun projects. We talk about new stuff that we're doing. So feel free to give us a thumbs up over there. Let us know what you wanna see. That helps me out when I do more videos and more classes. Um, again, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful holiday. Happy Hanukkah to those. I know that just happened, started yesterday. Uh, have Merry Christmas, happy holidays to everybody and happy new year. We're gonna be back in January, uh, starting right away. So um, please leave us some feedback. Let us know what you think, any of these classes, what else you wanna learn and we'll be there. I can't thank you guys enough. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend and a wonderful holidays. I'll talk to you all very soon. Be safe.